Prize in Chemistry jointly to Jacques Dubochet, Joachim Frank, and Richard Henderson. And the Academy citation runs for developing cryo-electron microscopy for the high-resolution structure determination of biomolecules in solution. Für die Entwicklung der Kryoelektronenmikroskopie für die hochauflösende Strukturbestimmung von Biomolekülen in Lösung. Pour le développement de la cryomicroscopie électronique, pour la détermination haute résolution de la structure des biomolécules en solution. Zarazvitie, cryoelectrono et microscopie, visokova, razrechenia, dia predelienia structuri biomolecul varastvore. And you see pictures of our new Nobel laureates on the screen above me. Jacques de Bourget was born in 1942 in Switzerland. He studied in Basel and in Geneva, and he's currently honorary professor at the Université de Lausanne in Switzerland. He's a Swiss citizen. Joachim Frank was born in 1940 in Germany. He got his PhD at the Technical University in Munich, München and he's currently a professor at Columbia University in New York. He is nowadays a US citizen. And last but not least, Richard Henderson was born in 1945 in Scotland. He received his PhD at the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom, and he is since many years at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, and I think he is the 15th Nobel laureate from that laboratory, rather impressive. With that, I'll give the word to the chairman of the Nobel Committee, Soras Nogerup Linse. She'll provide a brief summary of the research that's been awarded today. Sora, please. Thank you, Jaren. We are made of more water than anything else. Biomolecules, the molecules of life, they do their job in water. So let's put them there. Now they are free to move and act and interact and do their job together to help us execute important functions like thinking and carrying around stuff. Every protein in here is roughly 10 nanometers in diameter. So if I were to reverse this process and pull out one million of them and put them along one line, they would cover just a centimeter. Cryo-EM is able to see each and every one of these protein molecules. And it can do much better than so. It can see each and every atom inside each protein to tell us how they are arranged to build up their intricate structures. It can do even better than so. It can show us how the different parts of the protein moves relative to one another when they execute their jobs. Richard Henderson showed the first protein structure at atomic resolution using cryo-electron microscopy. Jacques Dubochet developed a method to take these samples of biomolecules in water and freeze them so rapidly that they formed a thin film in which the water was preserved in a liquid state, just like in a glass window. Joachim Frank developed a method to combine the information from multiple blurry images of those individual proteins into one sharp image. Soon there are no more secrets. Now we can see the intricate details of the biomolecules in every corner of our cells, in every drop of our body fluids. We can understand how they are built and how they act and how they work together in large communities. We are facing a revolution in biochemistry. Thank you, Sara, for that great introduction. <laughs> now, Peter, can you show us perhaps what those molecules in the glass look like? No, I'll try. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, so this picture <coughs> shows uh, uh, three examples of uh, structures that have been determined using the technique uh, that uh, has been developed by the laureate. 
And the, the first one on the left side is a biological clock. It's a protein complex which controls the time in many living organisms. And, and this is closely related to the prize for physiology or medicine that we could hear about a couple of days ago. In the middle, it's a pressure sensor. It's of the type that is used, for example, in our ear to convert the sound waves into electrical signals. Uh, on the right side, it's a huge protein complex that is uh, used by salmonella bacteria to inject harmful substances into the host. This is the host and this is the bacterium itself. And these structures have been determined using the techniques developed by the laureates, which have opened up a completely new world to us to be able to see all these molecules inside the cell and how they interact. The challenge is that these molecules are very small. The size relation of a molecule like the one I showed to a human being is approximately the same as of a human being to the size of the moon. We currently don't have any instrument that would allow us to see a human being on the moon from the surface of our planet. But we do have an instrument which allows us now to see the molecules inside our cells. And not even that, we can even see the atoms that build up these molecules and see the details of all these molecules. Uh, the electron microscope is not a new instrument. It was developed almost 100 years ago. Uh, the problem is that there is a great challenge in studying biological objects using electron microscopy because there must be vacuum inside the electron microscope. And biological objects are composed primarily of water. And if you place an uh, uh, object containing water in a vacuum, it dries and the structure changes. If you switched on the electron beam then, the object is burned and the structure does not even remind us about the original object. Richard Henderson studied an, orga an, a uh, an organism or a protein from an organism that lives in salt ponds like the one shown here in the desert. Uh, this is a microorganism which carries patches of photosynthetic proteins on its surface. And these proteins, they are arranged in uh, regular arrays that uh, contain many, many of these molecules. And Richard Henderson placed these <coughs> patches in the electron microscope. And uh, by observing about 5 million of these uh, uh, bacteriopsin molecules at the same time, he could distribute the, the electron radiation over a large number of molecules so that each, of, each one of them did not receive enough electron radiation that would damage them, but he could then study the molecules. And in this way, he could uh, obtain a high-resolution structure of the protein of bacteriodopsin. But this is a special case. Not all molecules are oriented like in, in this case, in this microorganism. Most molecules are free or uh, like Sarah showed in water. And Richard Henson believed that the technique uh, could be also used to study essentially any molecule that is found in a cell. Uh, when we study a picture of molecules that are in solution, and this is an example of a ribosome that we see in solution here, the, all the molecules are randomly distributed in the solution. So they are difficult to find. So the challenge is now to, do, using this very low, low electron radiation that would not damage the molecules, to actually see them and see where they are. Then we have to see how are they oriented relative to each other. Because we must know, in order to determine the three-dimensional structure, to, to, to combine all these pictures into the whole structure. Joachim Frank developed these methods. And it's illustrated in <coughs> this schematic illustration. So here are the molecules <coughs> in solution. They have different orientation. Uh, when these molecules are illuminated by the electron beam, we see projections of these molecules, like shadows of these molecules. And these shadows differ in shape depending on the orientation of the object that was illuminated. This can be now sorted 
uh, those that have the same shape or originate from molecules with the same orientation are sorted in groups. <clears throat> and then an average of all these pictures can be taken in each of these groups. And in this way, one can obtain sharper pictures. One can increase the signal relative to the background noise. And this is the way now to obtain better resolution pictures. Then these pictures can be combined to build a three-dimensional structure. And this is an example of such a structure. But in order now to to obtain information about the details, about the atoms, what the, what the molecule looks like inside. Better sample preparation methods were needed. And many people believed that the way to prepare samples was to, would be to freeze them. The problem is that if you place a biological object in ice, in, in, in water and freeze, then ice crystals are formed around the object. And the ice crystals diffract the electron beam so when it's illuminated, all the information is lost because the ice crystal diffract the, the electron beam. But people also believe that it would be possible perhaps to freeze the uh, sample fast enough so that the water would not have time to arrange itself into crystals to form ice, but would be a structure that is, is like a liquid. All the water molecules are randomly distributed and not, not forming the ice crystals. And if this is the case, then it would be possible to obtain a sharp picture because all the electron beams would be evenly absorbed by the, by the this vitrified water, as it's called. And in this way, Jacques de Boucher could uh, develop the technique that allowed to see biomolecules uh, at good contrast. The method is described in this picture. So the, the sample is applied to a grid <coughs> and uh, the, uh, the sample then in water is, spans the, the, the distance across this, the holes in this grid. And <clears throat> then the sample is frozen in uh, ethane that is cooled by liquid nitrogen. So the temperature is about mi minus 190 degrees. It's rapidly frozen and then the glass is formed. The water in a glass form is, form, is formed across the, these holes. This is a setup that was built by Jacques de Boucher. And we see here it's like a catapult that is used to, to inject the sample that is here into the cold ethane here. So it's frozen very rapidly in order to form this vitrified state. And using this method, Jacques de Boucher, in the beginning of 1980, he showed these beautiful pictures, like in this case of a virus. And everyone traveled to, who were working in this field traveled to his, his lab to, in order to learn the technique. And uh, it was then rapidly used by many other, in many other laboratories. The technique has transformed the electron microscopy from a technique that could be used to just see the shapes, the outer shapes of, of molecules, into one that is now used to see the details, the atoms inside the molecules. <clears throat> And the latest the technical developments occurred very recently. So it's very recent developments that we can actually see the details of, of these molecules. Uh, the technique is also relatively rapid. So once one has samples that can be studied, uh, the structure can be determined relatively rapidly. And this was exemplified uh, in last year. <clears throat> when the structure of the Zika virus was determined in just a few months, and it's seen here. And this structure shows the atomic details of the surface, which of course is important when developing drugs against the virus. <coughs> uh, but the technique is not only about seeing molecules, and I think this is a f fantastic for, for uh, developments that will, uh, has already started, but...